Welcome into a special edition of Weekend Drive. I'm meteorologist Ricky Matthews. We've explored places all across our region, from the mountains to the valleys and the lakes, of course. Our first trip, though, takes us to downtown Johnson City. If you enjoy the sights and sounds of old arcade games, I found a place where you can still indulge in them. There's nothing like a little friendly competition. Silverball City Arcade is located in downtown Johnson City. I have about 15 to 20 pinball machines. I have a lot of video games, uh, racing games, uh, shooting games, old uh, Nintendo and Sega arcades. From the classics to the modern, there's a game for everyone. Open seven days a week with all day play wristbands, only $10 for adults and seven for kids 13 and younger. The arcade is a great place for families to connect and adults to remember games from their childhood. People who grew up with a certain game and when they come in here and they're really happy to see it and that reminds them of their past. Arcades are really growing in popularity too. Everyone thought pinball died like 10 years ago and now it's finally getting a big comeback. The collector market is also thriving with console prices ranging based off several factors. There are some items everyone grew up with that are of course very popular like Pac-Man, Mario Brothers, uh, Galaga, Donkey Kong. Then there are some games that are not as popular, but they're really rare. They have a lot of value. Andreas tells me all the consoles in the arcade are for sale as well. So if you come out and really enjoy one, feel free to make an offer. He also switches out some of the games weekly. If you do visit, watch out! You never know when your videographer Cubby may try to take you out on the racetrack. Bring your A game to this weekend drive. In Johnson City, Tennessee, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. They say Rubin's racing, right? All right, well, if you like to ride ATVs through the mountains, Southwest Virginia is becoming the place to go. I visited Hayside to check out their new trail system. The mountains of Southwest Virginia are quickly becoming a popular tourist destination. The Ridgeview Trail, part of the Spearhead Trail System, is in the ATV-friendly town of Hayside. ATV um, mechanics here in town, there's ATV service centers. Of course, there's uh, fantastic restaurants, um, full service gas convenience stores. Um, just everybody here in Hayside has, has been so excited to see this open up. Uh, the business community has been very excited. Of course, with any activity, safety is a priority. All riders and passengers must have helmets. Sean Lindsay, executive director of the trail system, says the trails are marked in terms of difficulty. If, if you haven't ridden a trail before, stand up, stay on the green trail so you're comfortable with those. Or if you're ridden in another area, like if you're coming from a far distant state or another country, uh, you know, riding in, in the desert of Utah yeah. may be different than riding, riding here. The trail system is open to ATVs, dirt bikes, mountain bikes, and even hikers from daylight to dusk. A motor vehicle permit available online or to local business is $50. That money goes to support the trails. Those permits uh, help help make the trails possible. They help pay our staff and the maintenance on the, and the security of the trail systems. A trail system located in a beautiful place, giving new life to Hayside. This, this is a turning point for our community. For more information on passes and a trail map, check out spearheadtrails.com. On a weekend drive in Hayside, Virginia, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYV. Well, many of you know I love airplanes and flying, so when I learned there was an exhibit that showcased the history of a local pilot, I had to check it out. Francis Gary Powers grew up in Pound, Virginia, where his love for aviation started at an early age. And when he was a young boy, about 12 years old, he went to a country fair. Uh, there was a barnstormer. Uh, he comes down, lands, and basically says, I left my heart up there. From there, Powers would join the United States Air Force, where he would fly F-84s and later the U-2 spy plane for the CIA, which he was flying on May 1st, 1960. He's four hours into his mission. He's at an altitude of 70,000 feet. He gets shot down by a near miss of a Soviet SA-2 missile that explodes near enough to the tail section to cause structural failure. Forced to parachute into Soviet territory, Powers would be picked up by the Soviets, convicted of espionage, and sentenced to 10 years. He would be released in 1962 as part of a prisoner exchange. Today, the terminal at the Wise Airport, now known as the Francis Gary Powers Terminal Building, honors Powers and continues to tell his story thanks to the support of Powers' family and the airport manager, Jared Powers. They think it's so random uh, that we would have that here. And then when you tell them that uh, Francis Gary Powers was from Wise County, uh, and that he grew up uh, here, 
it makes sense to them. Uh, and then they come over and they'll ask us uh, questions about what we have in the case. The display case holds memorabilia and other artifacts from the days when Powers lived in Wise. Back here in the back uh, is his uh, 1946 high school yearbook from Grundy, Virginia. To his early flying days. Jared has plans to expand the display in the future. I would love a flight suit. Um, you know, that's a big part of, of the U2 experience when you see that big yellow fluffy suit. If we can't get that, we would like to have, you know, some more models of the U2, any sort of uh, documentation that we can get about, uh, about, the, about the incident. It's been great to have it here and, and for them to actually see how local he was, you know, from Grundy to Milligan to, you know, that's our area. So he's, uh, it's, been, it's been phenomenal. It's been good to have it in here. On a weekend drive in Wise, Virginia, Meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. Francis Powers died in a helicopter crash in 1977. He was flying a news chopper for KNBC in Los Angeles when the chopper crashed after running out of fuel. In June of 2012, Powers was posthumously awarded the Silver Star Medal for demonstrating exceptional loyalty while enduring harsh interrogation. All right, from airplanes to rockets, the Hidden Figures movie focused on the life of three women who helped lay a new path for women in NASA. But did you know one of those women has a local connection? Three, two, one, zero, ignition, liftoff. Before John Glenn could make his historic flight in space, a woman with a local connection was trusted to check the figures for his historic flight. I have never seen a mind like the one your daughter has. Featured in a new movie, Hidden Figures, Catherine Coleman Goble Johnson was born in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia in 1918. From an early age, she had a strong interest in math, which she brought to Marion, Virginia and Carnegie High School in the late 1930s. It was through these very doors where Catherine Johnson entered many years ago to help change the lives of black students in her community. In the late 1930s, Johnson taught at Carnegie when it was a segregated black school with students attending from all over Smith County. Her teachings helped pave not only her future, but the futures of her students. They had the outlook that they could go anywhere and do anything. They just had to go somewhere else to do it. After she taught in Marion, she moved east to Newport News, Virginia. It was there she learned about a job with NASA. Her work for NASA in the years following would help pave America's path to space. Bolden wrote, you are one of the greatest minds ever to grace our agency or our country. And because of your mind, heart, and soul, my own granddaughters and young Americans like them can pursue their own dreams. But it's her work in the community, right here in Southwest Virginia, that really was her defining moment for many in the Marion community. It, it makes my heart swell. It, it makes me feel proud that she taught the people that I know and went on to just be famous. The connection is still here. There's still family members in the area that's related to, uh, you know, Miss Catherine Goba Johnson. And um, it's like you never left. On a weekend drive in Marion, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB.
our region has some great scenery waiting for you to explore. Waterfalls, trails, and more. Hey, that rhymes. This weekend drive takes us to Hampton, Tennessee to see one of the region's best waterfalls. Lace up your hiking shoes, it's time to go explore. Nestled into the Tennessee mountains is a nice weekend hike with a great reward at the end. Carter County is home to several waterfalls, one of which is Laurel Fork Falls. There are two ways to get to the falls. One entrance is off Highway 321 in Hampton. This is the longer way, roughly five and a half miles, but has less rocks to climb. The other entrance to the falls comes in from the top. You can park in a small parking lot located at Dennis Cove and hike roughly 1.3 miles along part of the Appalachian Trail. Most of the hike in isn't too bad for humans or dogs, with a lot of shade and a route that follows the creek for part of the hike. However, the route in from the top does involve a good amount of rocks, which lead down to the waterfall. Watch your step and be careful. Once you reach the bottom though, it's quite a sight. The flow of Laurel Fork Falls is very dependent on the weather. More rainfall means a much faster flowing waterfall. The waterfall size is roughly 40 feet tall and 50 feet wide, according to the Forest Service. If you go, send us some pictures on social. We may even use a few to help tell the day's weather story. On a weekend drive in Hampton, Tennessee, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. It was on that weekend drive I learned that I'm a little out of shape, but my dog can beat me up the rocks, no problem. All right, a jungle gym on the water. And I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but that's exactly what you can find out at South Holston Lake. You've heard of playgrounds at the park, but have you heard of one on the water? Soho Excursions, the same group that brought us to South Holston Lake last year to try out the crazy Aqua Blade, has another way for you to have fun at Sportsman's Marina. Two, two winters ago, um, I came to the marina owner, Travis, and uh, with the jet blade, and he asked me, Is that, have I ever seen an aqua glide? And I told him no, and so he showed me, and so I just, I just went in and bought some pieces, and uh, I've been really appreciative. He's done a good job with helping me, setting it up and everything. From slides, to <laughs> trampolines, it all adds up to a lot of fun. The park consists of several elements, which have multiple uses. So you can go from Jungle Joe over there, that's called the Thunderdome. Um, and then back behind that's the, the uh, fox trot. Then you try to run across and get to the next piece. Um, and in the back corner, it's the inversible. It's almost kind of like a kiddie pool. It's two to three feet deep. Um, parrots can go in there. There's actually cup holders, so they can bring drinks and everything. Um, and then on the rounds, the vista. And then back this way is the trampoline. And then obviously the big slide free fall there. Young kids and those young at heart can also have fun jumping from the inflatables into the refreshing water of South Holston Lake. For Jimmy and Travis, the Aqua Park allows them to provide another fun option to help the Abingdon and Washington County tourism market. Soho Excursions offers hourly, half day, day and weekend passes. There's also a summer pass option as well for those of you who want to have fun all summer long. The best way to get in touch with Jimmy and Soho Excursions is through their Facebook page. Check them out and let them know you saw News 5's Weekend Drive. At South Holston Lake, I'm meteorologist Ricky Matthews for News 5 WCYB.
Our region is home to many species of animals, deer, bear, raccoons, and a lot of others. But tigers, monkeys, and giraffes, yeah, not so common. They do live in our area, though. Where, you ask? Here's the answer. When you think of the animals that live in Southwest Virginia, you probably don't think of giraffes and camels. Creation Kingdom Zoo in Snowflake, Virginia makes you think otherwise. It's a natural environment. You know, a lot of your zoos are, are beautiful on the inside, but around the outside, you know, we've got kind of a metropolitan area almost. And uh, uh, again, uh, we believe that um, natural behavior comes from a natural environment. So if we want to see animals reproducing and making that difference for conservation, which is one of the mottos of the zoo here, then we have to put animals in that kind of environment. And so uh, off the beaten path here in Snowflake was a great place for that. The zoo experience is different from some other zoos you may have visited. It's a very interactive zoo. Um, visitors here have the opportunity to purchase food to feed a variety of animals from monkeys and lemurs um, and apes all the way to uh, uh, giraffes, zebras, camels. And while the animals are cool to look at or feed, Mark tells me the zoo operates as a way to ensure species survival. We're one of the few private zoos in the country that is an SSP, a species survival plan, partner with your um, AZA zoo. So we're a conservation partner with certain species here, um, the only private zoo in America that um, has a breeding program for sloth bears. With big cats, birds, primates, mammals, and reptiles, there's a lot to feed every day. We have uh, weekly orders of pallets of food that, that come into the zoo. So there's a, a tremendous amount of food, about 42 different varieties of food. On a weekend drive in Snowflake, Virginia, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. One of the cool things is Creation Kingdom Zoo is always adding new animals, new exhibits, and a lot of fun for your entire family. They're going to open for the 2018 season on March 17th. All right, from animals to dinosaurs, if you've ever dreamed of seeing dinosaurs in person, I found the place for you. This Jurassic edition of Weekend Drive takes us to Bluff City, Tennessee and the awesome Dinosaur Park. Idea. Ask someone what they do at dinner and you may get a variety of answers, but probably none as unique as this. I build dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a good conversation starter. <laughs> Chris Kastner, an artist by trade, is the mastermind behind these life-size creations. From the T-Rex to the Stegosaurus, you can find all types of dinosaurs at the Backyard Terrors and Dinosaur Park in Bluff City. 43 different species. There's probably close to 50. We got six Velociraptors, four Struthiomimus, so there's multiples of some of them. One of the main goals of the park is education, with each dino having information signs associated with them. I consulted paleontologists in Canada, the UK, and all these people gave input, and all of our dinosaurs are built with up-to-the-date knowledge. If you want to know about dinosaurs, this will help you out. If you already know a bit about them, you might learn something a little new. During my visit, I learned that some dinosaurs are thought to have had feathers. We found feathers on Velociraptor. We think they have them now. Uh, some of your smaller predatory dinosaurs, and you know, Modern birds are direct descendants of one line of dinosaurs. Kids are free to dig around for fossils, but the park also appeals to all ages. I have seniors that come down here every year, and they go through it, you know, with their walkers and canes. They have a ball. And why spend so much time building dinosaurs? There's an easy answer. You know, they're not really alive until people are out here experiencing them. When you hear the kid go, a T-Rex, there's a T-Rex mom, you know, and that's awesome. The park is free to visit and only runs on donations from visitors. On a weekend drive in Bluff City, Tennessee, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. And that guy really cares about the community. And of course, cares about the kids as well. That's really what the park is there for. If you go, look for a special dinosaur. There's one dedicated to our dear friend, Jim Conrad, who passed away a few years ago. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Milling, grinding, and more. They're all on display at White's Mill in Washington County, Virginia, waiting for you to explore. It's a light look back at how life used to be, farm life across Appalachia. Dating back to the late 1790s, White's Mill was instrumental in the agricultural lifestyle of Washington County, Virginia. Before the Second World War, there wasn't electric power out here. So this was the main source for getting your corn ground. Corn and wheat were processed using different types of machinery. In between these three roller mills, they're going upstairs in the their conveyors. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is here, the belt and the conveyor cups. And they actually bring them all the way upstairs and dump them, and then they come by gravity down. Outside, the large water wheel helped turn the gears. Getting the gears restored is the next goal in the restoration process. In 1974, the Virginia and National Registries of Historic Places listed White's Mill, recognizing the importance of its structure and heritage. This is one of the last remaining grist mills in Washington County. There used to be over 35. Mills back in the day were a meeting and social point, and to a degree, through its visitors, White's Mill is still that today. Now it really serves as a way to remember the history, the way the people lived before, and we can gain a lot of knowledge from them. On a weekend drive in White's Mill, Virginia, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. And students in our area are actually still gaining knowledge through White's Mill. Virginia Highlands Community College has teamed up with them to do a little bit of educational classes at the location. All right, when we come back, we're going to take you on another ATV adventure. This one, though, is in Northeast Tennessee. We'll take you to Off the Grid Mountain Adventures when we return. Welcome back. Over the past couple of years, we've really seen ATV trails grow in popularity across Southwest Virginia. An already popular zipline attraction though in Northeast Tennessee has now added its own. We visit our good friends at Off the Grid Mountain Adventures to go on an adventurous ride. You may remember the fun we had last year, ziplining over and through the trees in Elizabethton at Off the Grid Mountain Adventures. Now, they've got something new. Meet Monty. He's the owner and has probably one of the coolest jobs in Northeast Tennessee. It is a guided tour, so we're still out there having fun along with you guys. And our whole focus is to make it exciting, fun, thrilling, but still keep you in a safe environment. All right, thrill seekers, I know what you're thinking. It's a guided tour, so it won't be any fun. Not so. Some of the guys that came in from uh, the NASCAR race here, uh, we, you know, they're, they're adrenaline junkies. And they're like, when they first come up, they go, it's a guided tour, because they want to just get out and cut loose and go wild. 
Well, again, we don't slow you down. Uh, we keep you at a good pace, but we take you through a trail that where we know the whips and the turns to where we can make it exciting for you. And uh, after they were done, they said, man, this was one of the greatest experiences that we've had. If you've never ridden or drove an ATV before, don't worry. What we do, we go over the ATVs with you completely. Before we'll actually turn you loose on one, You'll actually get to drive it down in our field, make sure that you understand the shifting of it, the procedures of it, the handling of it, the braking of it, uh, then exactly how to put it into reverse. So you get a good feel for it before we actually get onto these crazy, steep, challenging trails that we've designed in here. You must be 18 or older with a valid driver's license to drive. Anyone, regardless of age, is able to ride as a passenger. The ATV tours can also be bundled with the zip line for a complete package. An extra bonus, thick tree cover also makes it a fun activity regardless of the weather. On a weekend drive in Elizabethton, Tennessee, meteorologist Ricky Matthews, News 5, WCYB. Meteorologist Chris Michaels came along with me for that story, and I can tell you he has never had more fun than he did on that one. You know, they've actually added more trails since we've shot that story, too. I checked in with Monty the other day, and he said they've made them steeper and also have added a few new ones. Plus, they'll do it at night now. Pretty crazy. All right, we hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Weekend Drive, and of course, we thank you for joining us. If you ever have an idea, feel free to send us that idea. You can send it to us in a tweet, email, or send it to us on Facebook. We're at all of those. Have a great day.